Hey guys, Provo1701 here, and today we are going to be ranking uh, the season 15 stories that I've seen from classic Doctor Who. Now, there's only one story I haven't seen from this season, and that is The Invisible Enemy. I've mentioned that before. Most of y'all probably know that by now. So I won't be talking about The Invisible Enemy, but I like season 15 a lot. I do think it's William's best season by far. Uh, there's no stories in here that I've seen that I just dislike. There's just some of them I have some issues with. And so I did feel like um, it made sense to go ahead and do a ranking video. And then when I do watch Invisible Enemy, I will update it accordingly. Uh, so we do have, so we still have five stories to look at. And at the bottom, I have The Invasion of Time. I think this is Tom's, my least favorite of his season finales. Uh, it's still not bad. I've only seen the original version of it. I haven't seen the version with the updated C the updated effects, although I've seen the updated effects on YouTube, and I do really think they improve the story, especially with the creatures that invade at the beginning. I really do think that makes them look a lot more believable. Um, I enjoy the story. I like Tom in it. He's clever. I like uh, Barusa in it. I love Barusa's just kind of resigned attitude to the situation. Sometimes he's just like, uh, I think the, doc the Doctor has some clever moments. I like they bring the Suntarans back. I like the twist halfway through when the Doctor thinks he saved the day and the Suntarans show up. I think that's really cool. Uh, again, overall, I enjoy the story. I like the one uh, Tom Lord Captain of the Guard. I forget his name. Uh, I like him. I think he's well acted. Uh, the Castellan is a little prick in this, which is very irksome. Uh, the problems with this story boil down to the budget just seemed to be running out, as you can see by the creatures who invade, who invade at the beginning. The budget, they look terrible. Uh, the inside shots of the TARDIS are atrocious. Where they're supposed to be walking around inside the TARDIS and the whole time I'm sitting there going, that is not the inside of the TARDIS. That is not the inside of the TARDIS. You can just tell the budget was gone and they're like, look, let's just film here. And then uh, Leela's departure is terrible, it's tacked on, it seems brutally out of character, and there's nothing in the story that builds to that relationship in that moment. It seems very out of place, very clunky. Uh, and that's why it's in bottom place. In fourth place is Underworld. Make no bones, I like Underworld. I think it gets a lot of hate because of the CSO work. And uh, don't get me wrong, I don't think much of the director for this, because this is the same guy who also directed Power of Kroll. <laughs> when we know I hate Power of Kroll. I don't like, this, well, the script is good, but the execution is bad. Same director here. But I actually, again, I think, like Power of Kroll, I think the story is fine. The story is alright. It's some of the execution, the CSO. I, I think if you couldn't have afforded to have done this better, then you shouldn't have done it. The model shots actually look pretty good. I actually enjoy the model shots. I enjoy the story. The CSO is actually the only thing holding this back because it's so prevalent in this story. Uh, at number three, we have Image of the Fendal. I like this one. Uh, my biggest gripe about this one is how the Fendal creature is realized at the end with the girl painted in the gold. That looks like somebody painted in gold. It looks uh, a lot like Dolores in the zombie video by the cranberries it looks a lot like that which works a lot better in the zombie video from the cranberries um it just it looks like a person in gold paint the eyes are very obviously painted on and i don't like eyes very obviously painted on i have some issues with that and keep her up trucking as well in a few scenes it, just, it takes me out of the story because it looks so blatantly fake the little creature behind her looks really really bad I just, I can't forgive how bad it looks, but the eyes bother me more than anything. The actual story I like, though, the bit, the story is phenomenal. If the creature was executed better, the story would be probably up there with Horror Fang Rock. But th uh, the story is good. I like what's going on with the story. I like uh, the whole thing about the skull and the thing surviving and it being a great terror and about how it's manipulated these people and that the guy's name is Thindle Man. Everything with the story, I really enjoy it. The nighttime location filming is also done really well and pulled off very nice. Much better than the Daemons was, which was a big issue I had with the Daemons. I didn't like the night filming. Pulled off much better in this story. Uh, so I like this one. It's just a couple things on the ex execution holding it back. The story is rock solid. Uh, number two is the Sunmakers. I do feel the Sunmakers is underrated. It's another cracking Robert Holmes script with a lot of wit in it, uh, a lot of satire in it. 
Obviously, he didn't like his tax, tax man very much. I love how the one guy is a very slimy guy to the point to where his natural state is slime. And like he was calling tax people slimy little pieces of slime, which seems appropriate. I don't think much of tax people either. Um, I like how well the characters are realized. Some moments are a little campy and over the top, like when they throw the guy over the tower. Uh, I have heard the target novelization of that's done a little better, uh, where they actually feel a little remorse for it. But it's still a very fun story. Um, if you haven't seen The Sunmakers, I recommend checking out The Sunmakers. My first experience was it actually was the target novel. It's just been so long ago since I read it. It was probably back in the 90s uh, that I, it's not a firm memory in my head. But that was, um, that was my first exposure to the story. I recognized the DVD cover because I recognized the little Weasley guy. He was also on the Target cover. A little slimy guy. So I love the Sunmakers. It's Robert Holmes being Robert Holmes, and Robert Holmes is great. And number one on the list is the Horror of Fame Rock. This one is amazing. This one stacks up with anything from the Hinchcliffe era just about. It might not be quite as great as a couple of them, but it stacks up pretty high. You could have put this into the you could have put this in the Hinchcliffe era, especially seasons 13 or 14. It would have fit right in. This is the story that tells you it's dangerous to be a guest star in Doctor Who. It can be very, very deadly. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. That's um, that's pretty crazy. But it is a really, really good story. Um, I uh, I really like it. I the realization of the Rutan is okay. It's not super great, but it is okay. And that one effect at the end when that beam shoots out of the lighthouse does look very dated, and I'd love to see that updated. If they ever, it doesn't need, it wouldn't need a lot of updating, just some of the stuff at the end. I wouldn't mind seeing the Rutan realized a little better, and I wouldn't see that mind seeing that shot from the beam of light from the lighthouse lighthouse realized a little better. But the the story just drips in atmosphere and suspense, and that line about I thought I locked it out, I locked it in with us. It's it's, it's wonderful story. If you haven't seen the horror of Fang Rock. Do yourself a favor and watch the Horror of Fang Rock. It's one of the best post-Hinchcliffe stories uh, out there. I think when I did my list ranking the uh, top 10 best Tom Baker stories post-Hinchcliffe era, it was pretty high up on the list. So check it out. So uh, other things to do, uh, click the like button, click the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications. I would like to know what you think. How do you rank season 15? What do you think of The Invisible Enemy? Is it one I'm going to be really excited about? Or is it going to be one that's just kind of meh? Or is it going to be one I'm like, ooh? I would love to hear your thoughts about that and to hear your ranking of the season. Also, I uh, have added some new stuff to my Patreon page. I have recently added a poll. Um that anyone can vote in. Normally, you have to be at least a $10 tier member to vote in polls. I have, uh, I am temporarily suspending that. Anyone who joins my Patreon right now can vote in polls. Uh, I have a $2 entry level. I also have a $5 level. If you would prefer to do either of those, just $2 a month or $5 a month, if you enjoy my content. Uh, this poll is uh, basically deciding which Doctor Who story I will be re-watching next. I will be re-watching uh, one of the lesser thought of stories, it's an option between six stories, three classic who, three modern who, that either the fandom doesn't think much of or I personally don't think much of. And the choices are the Crotons, the Android Invasion, um, Ark of Infinity, Sleep No More, uh, the Idiot's Lantern, and the God Complex. And y'all know I don't like the God Complex. And uh, so if you really want to torture me, please chip in a couple dollars if you like, if you think I'm worth it. And uh, go vote in that poll. Uh, the poll will be open probably th through about March 15th, uh, 2021. And uh, whichever one wins, I will rewatch and do a review of. So either way, I'm going to have to suffer through something I probably don't want to suffer through. Although I wouldn't mind rewatching the Crotons. I personally actually like that one. But uh, if it's the Android Invasion or God Complex, oh man, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, but if you are interested in that, I've also put up a my first behind the scenes video, uh, basically talking about my process and what all I do when I'm making videos, kind of from concept to putting it on paper. Because I do use a notebook for a lot of my videos. I like to write things down. I kind of go over that and talk about other steps in the process that I like to do. It's only about a six minute video, but if you would like access to that, I've also opened that up to uh, any tier level. So even if you join. At the $2 tier level, you can watch that as well. But most importantly, stay safe out there. And thank you for watching.